everybody good? Yes. yes. I don't know where I was the day they handed that stuff out. <laughs> Yeah, he got it all, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, feeling better already, ain't you? Yeah. yeah. Is everybody good? Yeah. Yes. Has anybody got a start place or hung up? Got any questions before I get going? I, I, I usually say, since it's rainy night and just kind of home folks here, I don't mind saying, does anybody got a start place? But I pretty much say it all the time now, so. Uh, everybody good? Yeah. Nobody's got, nobody's got one? No? Mary? No? All right. All right, I'll give you a chance. All right, Romans 2. Romans 2. Uh... I'm just going to drive this nail down a little more, all right? Because there's always there's always more. It's like you can, you know, it's my my uh, one of my goals is to keep you from getting religious because it's really easy to. It's really easy to. And so, uh, I, you know, that's I, I like it now. It, it's kind of puts you in a squirmy place every once in a while, but I I I've learned to like it. It's it's good stuff because. Well, it's just good. It's just good. So, I just want to drive this home even more and even more because I need it. I need it and I want it more in my life. So, I was thinking about this. Uh, uh, the goodness of God leads man to repentance, right? Or it's kindness. It's that some translate said it's the kindness of God. But if you really... Just, don't just quote the one little section of a verse there. If you really read what all he's writing throughout the whole thing, like Romans 1, Romans 2, Romans 3, it's like starts out Romans saying, I would tell anybody, the first book to even read would be Romans. I don't know, everybody don't have to agree with that. I say the first thing. Because Romans starts out, you know, talking about God, and then it said, you know, the law and man was hopeless, and that, you know, without the, under the law, every man's found guilty. Man's in a wretched, worthless old place, and you all are a mess, and this and that. And it's like really beating you down, right? And thinking, my goodness. And then he says, and then he goes on, under the law, every man, even if you don't have a law of yourself, on your own law, in your own heart, you'll condemn your own self, and you're all found guilty, no matter whether you're Jew or Gentile. All man's hopeless, right? And it's like, Jesus, this is kind of a bummer story he's writing to us, right? Then he gets to Romans 3. But now, uh, mm. apart from the law, yes, God has shown us a way to be made right with Him. Yeah. It's not up to your law keeping and your obedience and whether you're Jew or Gentile or whatever you are. God has shown us a way to be made right. Yes. Made right yes. without keeping the requirements of the law that was given through Moses. Those that believe in Jesus, that He gave His life and shed His blood, God has declared you righteous. Amen. Amen. I, I mean, I, I didn't intend to even get on that, but I never get tired of that. I never get tired of hearing that because nothing else says it. Nothing else is going to declare that in life. Nothing else is going to keep on telling you that and, and, and putting it up in your face all the time because everything else is really contrary to that. Every, you know, your behavior and your performance and your actions, all that's contrary. That's why we're righteous by faith. Faith is believing something you ain't got proof of. Right? I'm going to believe something I ain't got proof of. Well, are you righteous because you got proof? <laughs> no. I mean, I speak, I'm not speaking for you. I'm speaking for me. No. You have to speak for your own self. <laughs> So anyway, Paul's saying, you know, if you go back and read through Romans 2 and all this, it's like there's, there's certain people that, that have gotten kind of religious and, and they're saying, well, we're, we're uh, living up to the law, so to speak, in certain areas, so we can, we can judge and condemn those that aren't even maybe living it up to it at all or whatever. And Paul's saying, look, you're trying to judge folks and put folks under the law and condemn folks and you're not even living up, uh, up to the law yourselves. 
Right. And then he says, do you not know that it's the kindness or the goodness of God that leads man to repentance? Do you take it lightly that it's his goodness that it's where the power to find change is found, right? So it's like, you know, I find myself, lip, you know, I gotta, because here it is Thursday night, and I gotta stand up here and you all expecting me to come up with something. Right? You're, you're expecting that, whether you realize that or not or whatever. So if I let myself, I could like feel a little bit of pressure about that. Or, you know, because there'd be some weeks it's like, wow, you all go out of here smoking, right? And they're like, whoo, man, wasn't that something? Right? And then other times it's like, oh, well, the music was good. <laughs> so I'm saying there's an expectation that it's going to be like, I could say this, you know, I'll be like thinking all day on Thursday, I'm like, well, what are we going to do tonight, Lord? You know, it'd be, you, it'd be all right me if you let me in on it ahead of time. <laughs> I, you know, you don't have to. I don't, you know, I, but if you did, that'd be fine. And so then, you the know, longer the day goes on, I'm just going to be honest in front of you. I, the longer the day goes on and I ain't really heard nothing, you know, specific, and I'm like, well, you know. So then I'm driving home thinking, you know, Lord, I, I know you know what time it is, right? <laughs> And so then, then watch your mind, see? Your mind say, well, I know, because you guys know this last few weeks has been, we've been breeding cows, we've been, you know, AI, and we've been weaning cows, all this stuff has been like crazy busy, like hit the ground running in the morning, you go 9-0 all day long, and you, you just go until you plumb more out, and you go to sleep, and, and you, so, you know, you ain't, you ain't really, you ever been through like times of your life, you're so busy, you haven't given much, you, you don't get to sit down and just, focus and study and just be right in there snuggled up where you like to be, you know what I mean? Yeah. By here? Yeah. And so I'm thinking, you know what, uh, I ain't got anything to say tonight because... You're doing pretty good. See what I'm saying? <laughs> and then I say, think this, you know what, do, do I think I have something that's worthwhile to say or do, do I think that I come up with something up here because I've studied? <coughs> or because I've been focused, or because of this, or because of that, or because he's good. Because yeah. <laughs> he's good. Uh, see, uh, so I'm saying, it, it never, you never outgrow it. No matter how long, or no matter how, you know, I could stand up here and preach righteousness and grace to y'all. Y'all got it, and we say, okay, we got that. Now let's go on to something else, right? There's. You, you never get to the end of it. Uh, it's like you never outgrow it. It's still more. It's His goodness. You know why i got something to say? Cause it's not because I'm anything. Not because I've studied or prepared. I'm not against all that. I'm not saying that all that's wrong. I'm just saying because He's good. And it never runs out of goodness. Y'all are here and you're hungry because it, you know it's raining and cold and you're here anyway. Now, do you think that he's leaving your what he has to you in my hands? <laughs> he's better than that. So I'm just saying it's his goodness. It's his goodness. It's his goodness that brings about change. And and we can go shift gears in His goodness and just get more of His goodness. And let Him be good because if you get to a certain level and things of God are working in your life, then now you, now you get to a place where you think it's working in my life because I know of His goodness. You see what a tiny, tiny shift that is? Some of you missed it. I'll give it to you again. It's His goodness, right? We all believe in His grace. Now, we're all, we're all abundance of grace and we're all radical grace people, right? If you've been here very long at all. And we... We, we know how good God is, and we know that it gets God wants us healed and wants us to have victory and all that. We all got that now, right? So we say we believe the things of God are now working in our life, and, and it's real easy to say, yeah, it's because of the goodness of God. You look how easy it can look how easy it can flop to. It's because I know. You see how subtle that little switch was. That it's because I know now. Now if it's because I know, guess what? I I'm fine-tuning it for you, whether you know it or not. It's His goodness. And His goodness alone. 
keeps bringing about change in me. Uh, I, I'll, I'll say it again because I never get tired of saying it. Who knows who's watching or who ain't been here or whatever else. But it says it's the goodness of God that leads man to repentance. So here Paul's writing, he's saying these religious dudes that are under the law that think they've acquired a little bit of something. We're, we're not living up to the law, but at least we're better than them. Right? At least we're better than them. So this up and the up group that's still condemned by the law is now judging them, saying they're not qualified for the goodness of God. And so Paul's getting on them, and he's saying, look, don't you know that it's the goodness that brings about change and gets them up out of where they are, and, and not only them, but you too? Mm. Because repentance is not. We've really messed up repentance. I can't go by it without getting on it. We've, we've said repentance is you feeling guilty and sorry and making promises to God that you can't keep. We said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get up here and spend a few minutes making you all feel bad and, and tell you how rotten you are and no good you are and you're a bunch of failures and you, you're, you've got this and you've broke this law and you ain't living up to snuff and you got all these problems and this and that. It's all because you are you no good rotten sinners. Alright Jeff, get up there and play a real slow sad song. So everybody can feel guilty and you can run to the front and cry and tell God how sorry you are and make promises that I'm going to change this time. I mean it this time. And that lasts about two days. And now you're even more guilty and feeling worse than you were before you even made the promise. That's what religion has taught us, what repentance is. That's nothing of what repentance is. You can do all that and go home unchanged. You can attend church three times a week. You can read your verse of the day. Beep, beep. Verse of the day, all right. Hey, I've read my Bible. I can pray. Now I lay me. Have a, a sticker on my car and all that. Still not know God. You can have Christian music going all 24-7. Still not know God. The point... Jeff sang it. The whole point of Jesus coming, the whole point of the gospel is for us to be changed. Changed back into who we originally were created to be. Amen. It's not, okay, repeat this prayer. Tell God what a sorryful sinner you are and, and your name's wrote in the book and just try your best until you get over yonder. That's right. <clears throat> Repentance means this, to start thinking different. To have a whole new mindset. It's, it's like a whole different mind. Repent. Repent. It's like re is a prefix. Re, right? School teachers, you know, I don't get a very good grade in English most, <laughs> most nights, but re is to re, like redo something, right? To, do again, or go go back to, to redo something. Re, that prefix re, pin. So re means you're going to go back to something. Repent. It's like you're going to go back to thinking the way you were intended to think before man ever ate from the tree. Mm. In fact, it said pent. That, that word pent, it's like we get penthouse. Penthouse suite, right? You know, the penthouse, it's, it's up on the top floor. A high place. Get your mind back to the high place that it was intended to be before man ever ate from the tree. Before sin tainted our way of thinking. Before the world schooled us and taught us how to think and how to do it. You get me? Not only that, pent means five. You know the number of grace is five? Yes. Let grace get your mind back up to the high place that it was intended to be before man ever ate from the tree. What if we could actually think, what if we could actually think about everything, ourselves, about God, about life, about the world, about people, what if we could think the way we were originally intended to think before sin ever existed? <laughs> Amen. 
I'm going to tell you, it's possible or it wouldn't be in the book. He's not going to give you something that you can't get. Right? He's not going to just throw it out there and say, I'm oh, just kidding, you can't really achieve that. You can't really get that. You know? So how do we get that? That's what Paul's saying. Understanding His goodness and how good God is. Understanding how good God is is, is where the power for getting change is found. Leads man to change. Because we all still need change. I still need change. I still want change. I still want my mind to renewed to more. I still want to more think like sin never existed. Because that's the gift of righteousness, right? That's what grace is. Dean's, Dean's definition of grace, treat, God treating man as if sin never existed. Grace is this. God treating man as if sin never existed. I want to renew my mind to that, to where I can think and I can decide and I can uh, uh, interact and I can operate daily as if sin never existed. And why can I operate like that? Why can I get my mind renewed to that? Because as far as God's concerned, because of the finished work of Jesus, that's the way it is. If you've been given the gift of righteousness, is there still sin on your record? If you've been given the gift of righteousness, it's a gift, see? You didn't achieve it. You didn't perform it. You didn't, you didn't behave well enough for it. You didn't earn it. You didn't clean up yourself enough. You didn't. You couldn't. Couldn't. So He loved us enough to give it to us as a free gift. Jesus came and achieved it. Jesus never sinned. Jesus came to earth and performed never sinning. got that? Jesus came and performed never sinning. He lived it. And then put my name there. Down. Mm -hmm. Yes. He never sinned. Right? right? Jesus never sinned. Jason did. So Jesus swapped places with, with Jason. Now, as far as eternity is concerned, as far as heaven's concerned, as far as the Father's concerned, Jason's never sinned. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> now you say, well, wait a minute now. I'm talking about the goodness of God. Amen. It's only because of God good, goodness of God that I got that. He's good. All and it's, it's His goodness, not Jason's goodness. It's all based on His goodness. Mm. It's none of it based on your goodness. If, if I got up here and knocked out, brought the house down tonight and everybody's wiped out and wow, it's the greatest thing we ever heard, guess what? It ain't because Jason's goodness. Because God's good. Amen. It's because of His goodness. And, and the more we... Believe in that. He can't help it. He can't help it. The more you draw on it, the more pulls out, the more pulls out of you. It's the way it works. It's the goodness of God that leads man to change. And we still gotta keep renewing our mind to this to this feeling or this thinking that says, well. Yeah, all right, but so, only so much. Or, yeah, all right, I understand it now, and I've reached a certain level. Now it's a little bit up to me. Or, you gotta forget that. You gotta forget that. It's his goodness. And it's like, I, I want, this is gonna sound, it's just gonna sound however it sounds. I don't care how it sounds. <laughs> I want some more of it. Yes. Bless me. Give me more revelation of His goodness because we ain't exhausted it. And I think He's a lot better than I used to think He was. He's a lot better than I used to think He was. 
Oh, Bill Johnson said, if God's, he said, we say, well, God's better than we think he is. Well, then start thinking different. <laughs> if he's better than we think he is, then our thinking needs to change. Because he's good. And he wants us blessed. And I say, well, only so much, right? Now go on and bless me. Now go on and show off and be good to me. Go on, knock yourself out. Uh, you, you want more change in my life? Guess what? I'm just going to have to give more of His goodness. Y'all think I'm blessed now? You wait and see. A year from now, you're going to be shaking your head. Five years from now, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going where no man's gone before. No. <laughs> well, I'm going to try to. I mean, I'm not going to try. I'm just going. I'm just going. I just believe it and I want it. I'm asking for it. He's he just looking for somebody hungry. Humanity resists. That's why I'm telling you this. Humanity resists something for nothing. Humanity resists the fallen nature of man. It resists something for free. Right? It, it says, well, I, you know, I can, I can accept Jesus to get me into heaven, you know, because I, I need that. I don't want to go to hell. But now, don't get carried away. I need to suffer along a little bit and pay for my <clears throat> sins and, and return the favor and pay God back a little bit, right? And then once I get to a certain level, maybe then a little bit of blessing will flow. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, the devil's come up with that scenario. Like, the devil's the one back in religion. And religion tries to keep us in this thing. You saw Paul exposing religious spirit in this, in this text right here. He said, this religious humanity deal is trying to qualify each other. Trying to grade each other and score each other. Well, you're living... I'm getting this cleaned up. Well, this is a little better. Oh, they're faithful. Oh, they go to church all the time. You see how we grade... The devil's saying, look, if I, can, if I can get them to receive the blessing of God based on how good they are, then I'll just keep raising the bar and they'll always be disqualified and they'll keep resisting and not receiving. And, and if I can keep them from receiving the goodness of God, then they'll go unchanged. Then they'll go through life singing the songs. They'll go through life with the bumper sticker. They'll go through life can't wait to get over yonder. And they'll go unchanged and they'll not have any real effect. The gospel's way more than getting your name in a book and repeat this prayer and you can't wait for over yonder. Religion's made it about that. Church has made it about that. And that's the reason we sing so many songs about Jesus come quickly. Come on, can't wait. You know, all this stuff. I, I'm not in a hurry. He ain't in a hurry. I got a lot of devils to whoop for. I'm ready to go. I got a lot more goodness to live in for. I'm ready to go. I got a lot more changing to experience for. I'm ready to go. I'm saying we're just going to quit resisting. We're going to going for it. We're right now. Right now, we're going to understand that it's no longer about whether we're qualified or not. That it's no longer about whether we deserve it or not. It's no longer about whether we've reached a certain level or not. It's all about how good He is, and we're going to submit to that. We're going to agree with that and say, just come on with it, Lord. Come on with it. Bless me. I mean, embarrass me. Go on and heal me, even though I don't deserve it. Go on and heal me, even though I've caused whatever it is that's ailing me. Because your grace and mercy is so much bigger than anything I've ever done. Go on and Restore this for me. Go on and bless me with this. Go on and 
pour all this as much as I can stand in a quarter turn more. Let me experience your goodness. Because in your goodness is where my my insides are changed and oh I don't know what. Let me read this. Let me read this in the amplified. Bible good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ain't the Bible something now? They got Bibles that can call people. <laughs> send messages to people. Listen to this. But do you think, now let's see, 4, verse 4, Romans 2, or do you have no regard, this is amplified, or do you have no regard for the wealth of His kindness and tolerance and patience in withholding His wrath? Are you actually unaware or ignorant of the fact that God's kindness leads you to repentance? That is to change your inner self, your old way of thinking, and seek His purpose for your life? Did you get that? That's in the word repentance. That's the goodness of God leads man to repentance. Here's it is in the, in the Amplified. I'll read to you again. Are you actually, oh, back up, or do you have no regard for the wealth of His kindness? The wealth of His kindness? The richness of it? Like, you're not going to run out of it? He's not on a shortage and divvying out so much to each person? He's got a lot. You're not going to run out of it. It's not even getting low. The wealth of His kindness and tolerance and patience in withholding His wrath, are you actually unaware or ignorant of the fact that God's kindness leads you to repentance? That is to change your inner self, your old way of thinking, seek His purpose for your life. Man, that's good. That's good. It's a mindset thing. And it's operating in us without us even being aware of this resisting. This waiting till I deserve it a little bit more. Waiting till I, you know, and it almost sounds, I can even so much say it like this, that we can say, well, I don't deserve it, or oh, I could be, you know, and I, we kind of lean that towards the negative side, right, of, of I, I need to get this cleaned up, or or I don't deserve this, or I deserve that, or, you know, kind of see how it's kind of a negative side. But even on the positive side of it, saying, regardless of what I deserve, even though I've come a long ways, and Errol, you think that I might actually do deserve a little something or another, right? You all think that. Huh. <laughs> Got to get rid of that mindset that it's anything about what we've earned or what we've done or what we haven't done or we've messed this up or we've not done this enough. He says, get your thinking off of you and what you've done and turn your thinking on to me and Amen. what I have done. Amen. When, does, when does what He's done speak louder in our lives and in our hearts and in our thinking than what we've done? Who actually is Lord? Jesus. Yeah. Come on, if we're living in this stuff that where what I've done matters more than what He's done, who's actually our Lord? Self. Self. Uh oh. Come on, if anything speaks louder and has more voice in my life and who I am than what He's done and what He said, oh, I can say Jesus is Lord and I can sing all the songs. But who's actually got the loudest voice? Who's actually got the most influence? Who's got my focus? Ouch. <laughs> I'm just exposing it. Because once it's drug off into the light, kicking and screaming, it's whooped. <laughs> Bye.
Everybody all right? Yes. yes. Uh, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just saying, I want a whole other level of His goodness. Amen. I want more revelation of how good He is. Paul said this, I believe it's Ephesians 3, that by understanding...